me. We're um, excited to find that. I think we're in for a shell of a day. When you treasure hunt, you're looking for those shells that you don't commonly see, right? There's a sawtooth pin shell, sailor's ear, some arcs. Wow, that's a monster. <laughs> Good spot because I completely missed that. Our treasures are adding up, I can tell you wow. that quick. We're gonna have to drop some of these off at the boat. We could have easily missed this shell. It's a little bit different than the knob well. That's right. It's it has lovely, that little hump right here. The lovely lady hump. You can see from his coloration that he is not the correct color anymore. He's um, done got hard too. Yeah. But that looks like yeah, a deer. Looks like a deer antler. Oh man. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, buddy. What is that, Steph? I don't want to keep it, but I do want to ask them if they know what it is. This wagon's getting too full. I can tell you that. Look at it. Tina grass and everything that you see on these banks would have been covered so my wife Steph and I are going out here just to look for these sea treasures that might have got washed in with the extreme high tide that's one of our favorite times to try to get out on the beach right after or looking for shells out on the beach is right after a storm or something comes through the area with high winds and high tides About 55 degrees right now. And on these cooler days like this, um, it's always a good time to come also because cold weather detours a lot of people from venturing out right they don't want to deal with this cold but um we don't mind it gives us something to do something to get out of the house and look forward to just about to tell you guys that well, I'm trying to get over to a little channel that cuts in behind like a it's kind of a point that comes out on this barrier island and we can kind of tuck the boat in back there and since the tide is coming in we don't have to worry about the boat getting stuck today it's always best to check these tides and stuff before you venture out to these beaches we actually run up on a little mud flat trying to get in here so i've tilted the motor up and we're going to ease on around here and get anchored on the back side i don't think stephanie's wanting to say too much to you guys today you being quiet, Seth. What's going on? You bundled up. You are looking bundled. all pretty with your pink jacket on and your pretty hat. I am bundled up. It's cold out here, so. 
hoping there'll be some finds out here. We'll Trust see what's me. washed up after this storm. The ones of you that are following on our videos, you know that once we get out here and still start seeing those beautiful, beautiful beach treasures, he's gonna, yep, 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 right, Steph? That's right. <laughs> We have made it. Got the boat cleated off above the high tide line, so we should be safe. Got the anchor set pretty good right here, so yeah, we should be good. And like the tide's going to keep coming up, so the anchor is up here where we can get to it easily with the water even being higher in this area. So while I got you right here, walk over here and take a look at this floater that is washed up here on this barrier island and with the storm look how many of the dead spartina reeds have come in to these beaches and this layer right here it's probably at least at least six to eight inches thick and you can see it better right here See the thickness there's one of the floaters that'll float up and down on the docks in this area where your ramp goes down to because we have that you know six to eight foot tidal flux what fluctuation here in south carolina right here where we at Whoa, right there, the right there, Steph. Yeah, I see it. Wow. And that's awesome. You, you, you know, this right here has come to you real live. You know, the video is what it is. And that particular shell right here that Stephanie just picked up, this Murex, we have only, and we've did a lot of, lot of videos. And a lot of times when you guys wasn't even with us on the videos that we ventured out to these beaches, and this is only about maybe what 20 in our collection now stuff yeah we're we're um excited to find that that is a great one what i'm saying that's what about number 20 there probably we got maybe. between 20 and 30 somewhere probably because we have found um a few and check this guy out right here yeah we're seeing tons of them already <laughs> i think we're in for a shell of a day I believe so. I believe this storm has washed up lots of good. Oh my goodness. Oh ones. my goodness. This storm that has just come through created all this tidal debris that is washing in. Now we're on the side of the Atlantic Ocean. And it uh, the further we get around that way, it should have pushed in, you know, tons of stuff. But like I said, we're we're going this way first. The big whelks are, you know, one of the things that we find a lot here. They're one of the biggest shells that we do find on well, the uh, normal. But that, like the murex, and we found even the ton shells. The little blue one right there. Those are cool to find. We've only found two of those big ton, ton shells, and they're shared throughout our videos. Look at this big angel wing. This is a six and a half to seven inch uh, angel wing. And you can see the shape of it. It looks just like angel wing. And when you find uh, two of them, the opposites, it'll make a pair, right? That's right. Another little blue whelk, the knobbed whelk. So we're seeing tons of them. And while we're right here, you know another the common thing that we'll see here you, like we show all the time is these horseshoe crabs washed up here there's another little whelk right here it's broken and that right there another little tiny horseshoe crab this is actually a dead 
crab because it, it's not a mold I don't believe or if it is there's usually a ridge right here that'll open easily and that'll be the molt of the horseshoe crab. Wow, that's a big so angel. That's here. a big angel wing. And there's another little whelk. And other shells that we're seeing is these big cockles. Check out the different sizes here. We don't typically pick up a lot of the cockles on. That's because we see so many of them. They're just common to our area. You know, when you treasure hunt, you're looking for those shells that you don't commonly see, right? Right, or, Steph? Yeah, or like the whelks. We do commonly see those, but we just love them, so we can't turn them down. Look at this one right here coming up. <laughs> this is why we mainly come out here for these beauties here. Yeah, those, these whelks, they are um, unbelievable. Nice. Love these orange colors. Love them, love them. Now, when I'm looking across here, I'm thinking maybe the tide didn't get here uh, at quite as high here as it did in the area where we have a place. Um, these reeds would have washed on in across this stuff. And the sand dunes look to be still in good shape, like no water hadn't went across them. But I have no idea. Well, for some reason, there's definitely a rack line that where these reeds and shells are washing in. Big orange cockle. Look at this patterns in this cockle here, stuff. Yep. Looks like it was the Florida cockle that has like just bleached out over time. There's a sawtooth pin shell, sailor's ear, some arcs, lots of arcs right here, and oysters. Plenty of driftwood. Pretty blue lightning well. Oh, wah, wah, broken. And here's the smooth pin shell. This is a little different than the one I was just showing. And a spider crab. And look how this guy is disguised himself. Yep, he's got this little grass that, that he's attached all over him. So for a minute there, you know, I thought I was just looking at some grass or something laying there and come to find out a spider crab hidden. I want to make it down to the edge, but this top keeps um, calling my name with all these pretty shells. It's hard to get away from them. One thing about venturing out, if you know the tide is coming in when you get to the area, maybe you want to start closer down to the low tide area so you have more time to move up to the high tide area before the tide actually gets up in that area, right? That's right. But look at these three little beauties, like little triplets. But we're kind of lost right here looking at these. And a jingle. And I, honestly, bit. I'm not seeing as much down that way. I think we'd be better off to keep on them going up through here, Steph. What do you think? I see a big well. I, I, think, we're, I think I do want to go down by the water line and see. And then we'll walk back because we got to walk back this area to get to where we're going. Happy wife, happy life. Right. <laughs> right. I, we wouldn't have spotted these if we wouldn't have walked down here though, so that was a good call, Steph. 
All right, you you sure are looking pretty me? today with your hair blowing in the wind on well, this video. I, I know it's like wild and hat hair from a boat ride, but I don't really care. I don't really care what any of you guys think I look like. I'm just me, so. What? I'm just, Wait. I'm wanting to show you the shells, not really me. Jeez, uh, why you got such an attitude like that? Well, that's not an attitude. I hope all of you guys feel that way. If you're more worried about what the world looks like um, or thinks that you look like or if you're worried about what other people look like so much, maybe you need to reevaluate what you're thinking. Oh, damn mercy. I didn't know you were going to start acting like that out here today. <laughs> Just I've got you. For anybody that knows me, I've acted that way my whole life. <laughs> Yes. I, I am just who I am. That we are who we am. That we are who we am. Or we am who we are. And if my hair would have been fixed this morning beforehand, it would not have been after the boat ride. So, oh well. It's amazing that you can be walking down this beach and these points, you can see them from a distance. See it washed in around it where the water went out. I see the... I see that one. What was you hollering about though? Get that one. Oh, look at these. All these colors. She spotted a big one over there. Oh, look at this pattern. Huh. Pretty cool. Wow, that's a monster. A monster. And I'm so hoping we don't find that big beauty that we put back in the end of the very last trip that we were here that was alive. He was a big, huge monster. So um, I hope that we don't find him. And check out, alive, check out the alive. holes in this shell right here. From the boring sponge. And there's lots of little worm holes on the inside of it. So pretty cool. So a sponge actually gets on that and sucks the nutrients out of the shell, creating those holes that you're seeing. That's right. So that way the sponge continues to thrive and live off of the nutrients that it sucks out of this shell. That's so, right. Beautiful, beautiful. Which way you want to go? Boy, I'm seeing a ton of stuff up there. Jeez, That's man. Right there, what? It is yep. another little broken piece of the murex. And since we don't find that many of them, we'll, we'll even keep the broken pieces. And I do see two wells. Just to collect. There, we're going to get those on the way back around on the high time. Line. Why are you doing your hair like that? Because it got caught in my earrings. Oh, I thought These you were- These little present earrings. Merry Christmas, y'all. Oh, look at there. I'm glad you made me turn around and look at you because look at what this is. A sand dollar. Is it alive? Let me see. You can flip it over like that right there and she's looking for those little hairs on the bottom of them that move around and glisten in the sun. If it's alive, you would see it moving on the bottom. And you can still see a little glistening just because it is wet, but you can see that there's areas that are dried out too. And I'm just looking to see if I see any movement. I don't at all, so. We're pretty sure are all but positive. It's, it's, it's dead. It's deceased. Tail piece off of one of the horseshoe crabs. That's where it would have attached in the back. Two broken shells, but look how big this shark eye would have been. And a little whelk broken. Shark eye moon snail. That's right. Same thing. Uh the shark eye is a type of moon snail. Right. That's what I thought. Little gray angel wing there. Awesome. 
Florida fighting comb. Oh man, all the way from Florida up here on South Carolina's coast. Look how discolored it is. Gray in color, some coral growing on it. So that's always cool, you know, to find the shell from a different area, you know, and that's why they call them the Florida fighting comb. That's right, they're not normally here, but there's tons of them in Florida. In Florida, they're almost like our oysters. They're everywhere. I wonder if the Florida shellers, they see so many of those uh, Florida fighting conchs that they probably pass a lot of them up. Yeah, I believe so. Another sand dollar. And he is no longer alive. The tide is coming in, which means that the tide has been out from these shells for over six and a half hours. Um, so, they're very not likely alive, especially this cold temperatures. That hurts a lot. Ooh, check that big boy sitting up there. Look at this one. Oh yeah, buried. Yeah, I would have missed this buried. one. I would have missed that one. And it just, if you would have just been glancing wait a minute, at it, it looks- Wait a minute, he's, oh, alive. he's alive. He's alive, watch him. He's burying his water out. Can you get that little Hold bit on. of sand right there? See? I'm gonna put his it back in the order. Door, and that's the snail in there. And as he's closing, he'll close that trap door to keep himself shape, uh, safe inside the shell, right? That's right. Look at those orange colors. And I'm going to put him back in the water. Yeah, put him down in the water right there. Even though the tide is coming in, he would have been perfectly fine where he was. But yeah, it is cool out, out here. It is, you know, really, really cool out here. Like I said, it's in the 50s here. And... Another piece of, uh, is that the lace yeah, murex? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Looks like a big piece of the lace murex. Yeah, but it's in the 50s here, so that snail up on this beach, without it being so hot, it he would have been fine. I and this, big one. Yeah, that's the one that I was whooping and hollering about a while ago. Wanting to show you guys. And it's got a lot of that that blue color in it from our area with our pluff mud it stains these shells that dark color and it almost looks like a blue we found some that actually look like even a cobalt blue right big i'm seeing a big olive right here that's a good spot because i completely missed that even though i glanced around at this area up here i completely missed him that's a Beautiful. cool find the South Carolina State Shell, the lettered olive. That's Check right. that one out right there in the surf. I'm um, gonna have to wait on this wave to go by. Walk it up a little bit. Right oh, there. look at here. I can see those colors. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's that blue color that we were mentioning. A little bit better when it's got that sheen and that shine and you can you can make shells look like that with mineral oil also pretty little one here yeah we on a treasure hunt today and look at this little pear whelk oh the storm has washed in some beauties look we at this one there's a broken one another little muted one there uh -oh. but look at that bright one let me get the wagon out of the shadow nice Gorgeous. This beach is loaded. Loaded with beach treasures. See another? It was worth the trip today, right, Heck Steph? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. He's a starfish. Uh, I'm trying to find something to hook him over in. She don't want to touch him with her bare hand. Yep, I do She's see that he is still alive. trying to see if he's alive. moving a little bit. Yeah. And if he is, we try to help him get down to the water. See his little legs still moving. Let me see if I can wedge him up or something these little reeds using them like chopsticks kind of but that ain't working out too good that oyster i picked you up with is good use this a little like bigger a, one yeah like a little shovel get up under there we go and look at that he led us to that it's very and it's empty it is empty. It it's is a full, keeper. It's full of sand, full of no, deep sand. 
Oh, look at there, two more. So I'm glad I got my boots on. Wow. Check them out. Look here. We are loaded down with shells. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. What, well, what are we gonna do with all these darn shells, huh? Well, yeah. What are we gonna do with all of them, though? We'll add them to our, my collection or our collection. There's another starfish right here. Now he's been upside down for a while because these reeds have had him trapped. And I don't really see any movement. And the water is coming back up, but he looks like he's in desperate need of help right now. So I'm gonna put him back in the water. And there's a well right there at your feet. It's funny that you noticed that one there, because I noticed this one here also. And the two of them right here in this area, they remind me of each other because they both have a lot of matrix built up on them. This one's the same way. Wow, yeah. This one's thick with it too. There's probably three millimeters worth of protozoan matrix on it. And this one too, you can see where the barnacles are. The protozoan matrix is built up even all the way across the top of the barnacles here. So it's deep. So you could, uh, I mean, if you're the type that you'd really want to see what that shell looked like, you could use picks and scrapers and chemicals to probably get this shell right back down to the shell itself right. and see what it looks like. Yeah. See what treasure hides underneath it, right? And if you want to do it really quickly, you can soak it in bleach for a little bit. That'll dry all that out. Or you can just let it sit and air dry. That'll help dry it out too. Our treasures are adding up, I can tell you wow. that quick. We may have to go back by the boat on this one. I was just one. thinking about that. We're going to have to drop some of these off at the boat. Pretty pear well. Oh, he's still alive. Awesome little buddy. I'm going to put you back in the water. Go ahead. Right at the water's edge already. Huh. And we we still gotta go back down this. That high tide has washed in up through there. And I can see big shells laying up there even from here. But we're start trying to get on around to this point where we come into with the boat and then we'll walk that high tide back around. Two moon snails, the shark eye shells. Oh. This one right here is the ones they nicknamed like the Paul Newman because of that blue center in the eye. And how about the drill holes in them? That's right. It's got the characteristic drill holes. These um, gastropods do, um, they're basically cannibals. They eat each other. And so these type of shells, as, long, as well as the whelks, they'll actually drill a hole through the exterior of another shell basically to eat it. Cannibals. That's right. They're cannibals. Cannibals. Big slipper shell. That's a little different. And this is cool too. Let me grab this here while it's there. A big arc and this little slipper. And you see why it looks, why they call it a slipper. It just looks like a shoe almost. Almost like the clogs, like the tap dancers wear. And then uh, arc shell. And look, it's got a couple different growths growing on it. It's got a bunch of worm holes and some coral. And that's what made it interesting to me to pick up because, you know, when we find something unique like that with that build up on it, it's just a little different, right? That's right. We don't really pick up many of the arc shells, kind of like the cockles and the oysters. Unless something just speaks to us, we don't really keep a lot of those. We have got hours of beach exploring still to do here today. Another one of those pin shells. That's nice. It is. Because I know we're not going to leave until we kind of see about everything today. The tide's coming in. We're in a good uh, predicament because, you know, uh, I mentioned that when the tide's dropping, if you anchor up here and you right here, this tide starts dropping, your boat will be beached. And it has happened to us, right? It has. Check out the last video. So this is a broken one, but look how black this whelk is. It's not blue anymore, it's actually black. I'm seeing a nice shell right there. Yeah. Nice shell. Look at the colors on the inside of that one, Steph. Yeah, it was and just turned over so we could see the color. 
Wow. It was rolling around in the surf, so we got a spot of that orange before we got up to it. Gorgeous. It's definitely a beauty. It's a key. It's a keeper for you, right, so Kind of like you, you're a good keeper too. You bring me out on cold days to see Jeez. what's out on these beaches. Here we go again. <laughs> Trying to show out out here stuff. Well, you were fussing at me earlier for not talking, so now I'm yap, yap, yapping away with all these beauties we're finding. I had to get her going, you know, get her pumped up, riled up, ready to get out here and make this video right stuff yeah i got up excited this morning to get out here to see his our first chance to be able to get out here after this storm and we were excited to come see it i was looking uh, i was a little distracted i see some beautiful birds up there the oyster catchers got a pretty blue mussel and this is broken but in case we don't find one later this is a different type of whelk a channeled whelk you see it's just smooth and just has the round whorls with no big points on it they're a little uh, less common here than the whelks, as you can tell, right? And they are much more fragile, so... Much more. Because they're very thin compared very to thin. the knob whelks. That's right. We're just cutting up with you guys, having a good day walking down the beach with you, just videoing as we go. We never know what we're going to say in the camera or to the camera. Sometimes we make mistakes, we say things backwards. It's a lot that goes into making videos. We appreciate each and every one of you out there that hits that like button. And if you like videos like this, we always ask, hit the subscribe button. You know, we're not just trying to get subscribers. Uh, we want subscribers that want to watch the videos, right? Because uh, in my experience with uh, just getting subscribers to a channel ain't really what makes it grow. What makes it grow is how long the people of the channel are watching the videos. And if you like videos like this, this is the type of do, uh, videos that we do make here in Beaufort, South Carolina. Along with other videos, we're shrimp trawling, we're crabbing, we're beach exploring. Sometimes we're just sharing trips that we go on with our family and stuff like that. But just thought I'd bring that up. Here's another one of the things we see a lot in the winter here, these starfish. You see this one right here. One of his arms is almost completely ripped off. Matter of fact, right up the beach, I see your arm. He's cut in several areas, but if he can survive, and you see he is still alive, you see all his little legs still moving there. Um, if he can survive, he will grow those arms back. So good luck, little buddy. He's right there in the edge of the water. He should be fine. If he's gonna make it, he's gonna make it. And look, here's one of the arms. That could have come off of that Maybe. one, right? And that arm is still alive, but now it, since it does not have the center part of the starfish, this arm will, you know, become deceased and, you know, pass on because there's no part of it that will um, That's just the nerves and stuff it. in that's, it moving its legs right now, basically. That's right. So, so, sorry for that arm, but. Sad to see, but at least they can regenerate, you know, unlike us if we lose something. Right. Check this Ooh. here out here. Yeah, that's there we go. Oh, got to get a little bit of a video of it bouncing around in that water. You know, it was hard to spot, but that wave caught me just in the right time. See how it's covered now? We could have easily missed this shell. Yeah, and I feel sure we're missing hundreds. Oh, oh that's a big Lord. One. Oh, it's big. We like big shells and we can rinse, rinse it out a little bit more and it looks like the kind of wet. Wow, it's heavy. Very thick walled. And you see all the sand just pouring out of it. And I'm just mentioning that the heaviness uh, is the thick walled layers of yeah. the shell itself. In here, this is a thick, thick shell. Some shells are not thick, right? Right. And this looks like the kind of wet. It's a little bit different than the knob well. That's right. It's it has that love, little hump right here. The lovely lady hump. Although I don't know if it's a boy or a girl shell. I don't know how to tell the difference. I don't know if there's any way to tell the difference if a shell that you find on a beach was once a male or a female species. Um, we like we like reading comments. I know I'm talking to others that say they'll go on the channel just to read comments from the people who are watching, you know, informational things. And we ask that if we don't know something, that you kind of leave it in the comment. Let us know 
let the people that are reading about it know these people they are just like you they are interested in shells and that's what it's all about just having fun and getting out doing something else new along the coast of south carolina it occupies our time and we really enjoy it this is a sailor's ear and i picked this one up even though it's not one we keep commonly but this one's got so many different colors on it i am going to put it in our little cart and it is very fragile you see it's actually see-through oh, yeah. um so they are very very fragile it goes in my little basket that i keep separate so and we're about rid. round to the point now and i'm thinking there wouldn't have been much that got washed in on the back side you know because it's up in that cove where we left the boat we're about to turn right here She's going to go up here first. She spotted this welt. And then we're going to head right down. Right down this beach. Right where all that, you know, that high tide rack line is. And I think there's going to be some treasures. I know there is. There's some big shells laying down through here. I've seen them already. And I feel sure under these reeds are even tons of more shells. Wow, look how many reeds are washed in right here. It almost kind of looks like our yard did. Yeah, we were moved over a hundred wheelbarrow loads of Spartina, dead Spartina grass oh, out stuff. of our yard after this flood. And it's wet and heavy and just, it was a mess. Total mess. Took us four and a half hours. Jesus. Part of the price we pay for living in paradise. Well, we love it, so I mean. And if we would have left it there, it would have killed all our grass in our yard, and we don't have a lot already. It was already struggling to grow back from the last few hurricanes we've had. Yeah. Look at here. And we've had more damage to our property from hurricanes than this last storm, but these reeds that was the worst we ever had them washed up in our yard yeah it was yeah. it was a nightmare but thank god it wasn't any worse you know like back when hugo come through this area uh we we lost docks we lost you know uh sea walls we we lost golf cart we lost everything that was, that was matthew. what matthew that's right about yeah, six hugo, years ago yeah about seven hugo, now hugo was way before hugo that was 89 and, right and it was destruction just a little area. you know i made a little mistake yeah uh, we'll and we on. all do that like you said earlier we're not scripted this is not hollywood <laughs> that's right we're, we're just not, having fun script. this is just what we are and when <laughs> steph and i correct each other you know it's not uh, to do anything intentional harm to each other's feelings it's just that we want you know to correct ourselves so that we do keep up with what's right and what's wrong and this guy is the help each other i can see from his coloration that he is not the correct color anymore he's um, done got hard too yeah look at the imprint in the sand isn't that pretty yeah it's it's There's nice so many cockles up here for those who make the little trinket dishes out of the cockles or pour the epoxy in them and put the little turtles and all that swimming in it y'all would be in a field day up here this cockle <laughs> city yeah y'all have a big old trash bag loading up on all these cockles yeah. i can tell you that cockles, they're everywhere wood everywhere some here. more cockles and stuff are around on this uh far end back this way but you know we're coming around now back to the inlet side where some of those bigger shells and stuff should be later and you have to check these reeds out really really close some people may even want to you know just look under every single one but how can you how can you do all that you're probably gonna need to collect some more driftwood at some point not today but because look at that cool piece the... look at that cool piece of driftwood that looks like yeah, a deer it looks like a deer antler oh man like we got to keep that the deer are shedding their antlers right now at this time man let me get a look at you with it right there by your head see see what we're kind of like a reindeer at. and maybe even this way because that would be like the spout like his nose and this it would be this <laughs> side i don't know if you can see it from that close up <laughs> nah, just something cool something to talk here. about right i'm gonna put him under here I knew I could get her to start collecting that uh, driftwood sooner. Well, the driftwood that we had collected in our yard got all washed away with this last flood that we had, so. <laughs> yeah, mentioning storms, you know, 
things get washed away uh typically we would try to you know tie everything down anything that'll out. float we will put it up on shelves and up on um tables and stuff like that but this one kind of caught us off guard yeah we weren't um prepared for it to cause the kind of storm I means so storm surge that it had the offshore forecast was actually forecasting 16 foot seas in our area yeah. crazy as hurricane can you weather. imagine that 16 foot seas today they're like no, there's wow. no foot seas what so is that i'm not really sure um it's almost it looks like some type of bone so for you guys out there that are fossil hunters or bone collectors, let me know. I see one capsule right here. It looks, looks like, like whatever was. It. Yeah, it looks like whatever was, was here. Was that where like cartilage was in between the bones maybe? maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. That's a cool piece. I like that. Hmm. So y'all let us know what it is. Okay. There's a challenge. There's a challenge. Tell us what that is. You, you, you're a beach goer. You love beaching. You, you should be able to tell us. Oh, another big moon snail. Love those. Put it in the palm out. of your hand. Let's take a. And look at look at it's, the colors. It's um, diameter two and a half inches. Right. Another pretty whelk there. Little whelk here, about a three and a half incher. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Wow, we, wow, we, what a so day. We're seeing such pretty shells out here today. Who cares what somebody's hair looks like? Not me. She back on that hair thing on me again. I was just cutting up with her a little bit. You know, get her talking, get her riled up. I guess I succeeded, right? So now this is unusual. It looks like there's some sort of growth right here on these tip whorls. Let me give you a little side view angle of it almost like metal right yeah, there that's what i was thinking rusty looking but yeah. i don't know why it would be attached to this particular type of shell some yeah, i don't either some of the shells you know they'll they'll oh. attach their self to metal pieces and stuff like that that's but right, that there ain't normal yeah the whelk doesn't normally attach itself to anything so oh so beautiful beautiful five hole keyhole sand dollar yeah buddy you see the five different keyholes in it check it out there it is one two three four five yeah buddy and it is definitely deceased it has lost its color and bleached out yeah it's lost all the filling of the little hairs off of it just thought we would kind of mention that it's not alive a little busted up well but check out the little jingle the little jingle or our, my granny used to call it the baby's foot you see the little impression in there that the little muscle left the baby's foot impression the little white part you know the the, the part that's shaped like the little baby's foot i can see why uh, somebody would have called it that this one right here is pretty unique a little cockle built up with a lot of that worm holes on it Yep. And look at the inside. The inside oh, actually yeah. looks cooler than the outside. Yeah. Looks you like, don't, looks like a little maze, a little trail map. And look right there. Look there. Look there. Look, look. look I here. mean, we're getting around on this front side. Look right here. We're coming around on the front. Oh, I know some of y'all hate that tapping noise, but trying to get some of the sand out. We want to leave as much of the beach sand here as possible. Yeah, and we definitely don't want to chip them. We don't want to chip our shells. That's why, tough. you know, people kind of get a little upset if they hear somebody you know tap 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 with them shells they, they they're cringing they're like oh that could break that shell oh look at there what a big huge piece that was and here's oh. one and there's one man 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 we'll pick them up we'll pick these treasures up today here well there well everywhere well 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 we yeah. don't we don't normally pick the shells up we leave them most of the time right so <laughs> according to what kind of shell you're talking about <laughs> look at here guys that, that i mean there ain't no way she's knocking that dirt out i left in there but look we're on, we're on a walk of a day oh lordy there's no need for me to go any further without the cart and without stuff right here's some stuff here's one over here i see two three four 
like four more down that way my lord my lord <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a merry welcome of a day. Oh, another. Huh? Merry welcome of a day. <laughs> That's a little crazy. That was a little crazy saying. Didn't really make any sense. Oh, this one's busted a little too. Oh yeah, it is. We'll leave this for a little. Hermit. Let's leave that one. Look at there, another one buried here. What in the world are you going to do with all these stuff? I'm going to look at them and say, ooh, <laughs> ah, look at my pretty shells. <laughs> yeah. My pretties. And look over here. Oh, look at this. Horseshoe crab. Something a little different. Not a whelk for a change. We um, talked about them down there with them, I did too. And this one is a molt. You right. can see that it's separated. That's right a good there. example of what I was trying to explain the molt looks like. That, so there you go. That is split open right there. And that is just the molt of the horseshoe crab. So, they actually come out of that shell to grow. Their exoskeleton, it only gets this size right here. And once it hardens, it don't actually grow. So the crab itself has to come out of these shells. And when they come out, they could be a, a half inch to maybe an inch bigger. So they'll be packed inside of that shell. And the, finally the shell will bust and, and they'll and come out. This part is just like, almost like thin paper. I mean, look, it's, it's see-through. So it's kind of cool. crazy. Big oyster. It was kind of laying there and there was ridges on it. Made me think it was a murex a little bit. I knew that's what you were thinking. Yeah, the oysters will fool you every once in a while. And check out whatever that is. Oh Those man, are all over. this right here is, is one, of, one of the big crab, stone crab stone claws. Crab claw. And look at the size of it. Say that five times fast. And it must be freshly deceased is why all those bugs are on it. It is. It's got to be. That. No, I thought that was a whelk. There's a whelk. There's a whelk. Oh, this one's alive. Oh, we'll put him back. Here, you, you pull them and I'll put him back go Actually, ahead did, did they get a good view of him before we put him back yeah he's definitely another live one and you can see his foot hanging out there and when i touch it he's probably going to draw back in a little bit yeah, yeah see so he's definitely alive in. those live critters and live shells when you find them out on these beaches they need to be returned even when it comes to the sand dollars those sand dollars they they actually can help with erosion they embed themselves down in the ocean floor or the river floor and it helps the sand to keep from moving just another obstacle in their way the same way it would be if you're trying to put like rock or you know boulders in the edge of the water the sand dollars kind of work in that same manner she spotted some dolphins out there hey Steph there's a pretty one right there a little small guy I know they can't see. My, and right there. They can't see it off camera just because it's so far away and the GoPros don't show it up well, but there are several dolphins swimming right here. Yeah. Wow, look at all this. To your left, right on the yeah. sea. Look at this oyster, though. It's got wormhole matrix buildup. How thick on it? A lot of buildup there. Another nice beach find. Like we said, mostly, you know, we, we're well hunters because they're the big shells that we love picking up. And I say it all the time, but it's true. We love big shells and we cannot lie. Now, I thought one of those were a lightning well, but it wasn't. She's found another well. We're having a welcome of a day. Welcome of a day. 
we're not going to be able to pick up all these shells out here there's no way we're going to leave some behind Okay, here. Leave that guy. And I bet there's shells still up there in that thick Spartina too. Or also. Oh, look at here. He's deceased. I like that too. He's deceased hanging out of there. This little whelk. So it was a hermit crab. Ah, geez. Oh, sorry, little buddy. Uh, we're not going to keep him because, I mean, he's kind of a small shell and he'll be stinky so we're just gonna leave that guy today and then there's a um little tiny baby angel wing and a shark eye shell I, I was talking about all the colors in this cockle right here look at these colors it's amazing how these shells can create so many different colors patterns you can see the lines going from side to side right there it's all like in layers. How about this? Do you know what this is? This is a test for you. <laughs> this is, um, it's some type of root, right? I don't know what it is. She done challenged me and I don't know. Uh oh, look at her. That little angel one. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. She'll see it in the video. What is that, Steph? I don't want to keep it, but I do want to ask them if they know what it is. It's got to be some type of root. It is a type of root. I mean, I knew that. Look like, kind of like a potato or something. I don't know. Potato, potato. Uh-oh, another, oh, another live one. Another live one. That tied He's got sand on him. Well, the water's really close here. Oh, yeah, I am going to put them back. Water's really close right here, so that'd be a good time to walk right there. It's right there. Yeah, I see another one right here. We'll get back to that one when you get back up here. We got a lot to show you guys. I think there's still going to be a lot out here. Two more live ones taking that one back so i put those in the water too one with a live whelk snail still itself and the other had a big hermit crab in it so i put it back but then i found a pair of disc docenia you can see there's just wormhole mud built up on the inside of it and that little piece of cartilage little, little that holds them that together inside, a little better look at that inside stuff and that's hard it is, yep. I, like I, rin a, like I rinsed rock, all the like mud out already. Kind of consistency. 
Yeah, I rinsed the mud out when I got to the edge of the water. Right. Oh, look at this murex. Oh, look at there. Oh, oh man. You guys distracted me on that one because I had the camera turned that way for you guys and I'd be doggone it. Stephanie has done found another murex. And this blue, this busted up a little bit, but that's okay with me. Two in one day, two muraxes and a piece. So is that considered three when it's a piece? Sure. It's part of a different shell. I mean, now if you found two pieces that look like you come off the same shell, I don't think that would be considered two. It would be hard to see they came off the same shell unless they were still kind of connected, yeah. but who knows? Okay. Y'all know what I meant, but right? You know, if you can see it, all for the same shell, then there's one. <laughs> oh, look at her. Lightning whelk. Look at the long lightning whelk. Very, very oh, pointy. Yeah, that's pretty. Pretty, pretty. Long. Look at it. This thing, it, it the girth of it isn't but about three and a half to four inches, but the length is um, Seven. eight. Seven or eight. And then a little I short, would definitely stubby, say eight. A little short, stubby, knobbed whelk. And you can see the difference in the lightning whelk. The lightning whelk's opening is on the left, whereas the knobbed whelk and almost every other type of um, univalve shell, their opening is on the right side of the shell when you turn it over and look at the aperture. Look at oh, that what is this? Here. What is this? It's no, it's not. It's one of the sea cucumbers. Oh, look at that. Oh, it is. You better not touch it. Yeah, why? I don't know. You don't touch the uh, starfish. Why would you touch him? Well, he may be dead. He ain't looking so hot for sure. He's he actually already um, dried out and hard. And I think those sea cucumbers, I think they're edible. I believe they are, but... We're not going to eat it. No. Look at all these welts. And you well, know one. that the welt actually, you know, the snail that's inside of the well they're 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 a delicacy for people to eat so there's a market for those guys and there's areas where they can actually harvest the well for different things and i've actually seen people even take it straight out the shell there's a chunk of white meat after you remove all the uh different guts and stuff like that from around it and that chunk of meat they can actually eat it raw pretty pretty cool some people like it uh like raw on salads and stuff like that also whelk salad This wagon's getting too full. I can tell you that. Look at it. This thing's starting to sink down. You can see it's starting to sink down from the weight on the beach here. And just in case that little sea cucumber had any viability left, I felt guilty. I had to go put him back in the water. And this right here, little double decker Mack wagon, it's been a great, great uh, beach cart for us. The double decker is it's got the rack down here. And, you know, the big part on the top for storing things in and that's what they call the double decker and we're pretty you know beachy we get out on the beach a lot and this these wagons still last us years yeah. every, every now and then years. you know you start to see stuff like this right here maybe get some lithium spray grease and put on it the lithium grease that white one yeah, i know uh, wd-40 makes a good one with the white lithium grease. I like that. It uh, really helps. Yeah, I don't know if this one will make it a Look whole nother year or not. She about stepped oh, on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so many shells, we can't possibly see them all. Even though we, you know, we're looking now. We, we, we're looking for these shells. But there's no way that we're finding them all. So we ask that if you do ever come out to one of these barrier island beaches do like we do also pick up some trash while you're out here right look at this any beach you go to 
Look how big that shark eye would have been. And a sea urchin. We're gonna get back to it. Huge. I mean, he's three inches just a, across. Goodness. Yeah. This is this would have been, been one like of that. the giant giants right there. Giant shark eye. This is the sea urchin, like you said, and these are what's commonly just called a sea urchin. And you see a lot of the spines have washed off of the top, so he is definitely deceased. Um, you can see his. Um, Mm, I'm trying to think of what the name is. Something, lantern? Like, is it like a beak in the it, center? It is like it's, a beak, and I'm just trying to, I forgot what. That's actually where they feed, right there in the center, right? That's right. That's their teeth, basically. That's cool find. Cool find. Something else to share gone? our little bit of knowledge with you guys. It's gone out of my brain, but that little beak has a name. If we ever share any knowledge with you, you know that helps you out just a little bit or you know helps you get through the day or you know just bring you out to the beach with us and you enjoy these videos please hit that like button it helps us the lantern of something i can't think of it but anyway one of you guys will tell me what's the name of the little beak on the inside of the sea urchin a little lightning wilt that one's a pretty one read the comments read the comments somebody's gonna give us the name yeah I know it, and I just, just uh, tip my uh, what tongue. is number that? Murex. Number three, number now four, is, with the considering the piece. Is this a lace or is this? I don't know. I, I don't I know think for this sure. One may be, I'm, it's hard to tell because it the is spines, like in rows. The spines are worn but off. But I'm normally, still thinking that the lace of murex maybe be spread out a little bit more. Maybe. Um, that don't. That still looks like one of the giant eastern murexes yeah. to me. I don't so this, know. So this is the same thing that we found. Yeah, yeah. It is. it's definitely the same. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We we have found. I think we found the late smearax back in one of our other videos. Huge one. Huge. Go through our selling videos and find that late smearax. This is where we had come down through here, Steph. Yeah. Because that's where we positioned those cockle shells. You want to venture down a little bit? Check this area. Yeah. I'm wanting to dump the car. I'm wanting to empty the car in the boat. I love that we're close. right there. That's pretty. That yeah, the driftwood. similar to the length of the one that I know washed away from our house that I haven't been able to find. This is one of our neighbor's houses, I feel sure. Can you grab this right here for me? There's a Pretty one. Pretty one. So this is the little whelk that I just picked up and you can see it's got a lot of that protozoan matrix covering it again. And check out this. A lot of people find these and they'll post and they'll say, what is this? But it's actually just a piece of a sand dollar. It's a broken piece of a sand dollar. But look at the little intricate patterns on the back side of that. It's just pretty cool. So I think a lot of people think they're like a scoot when they find them, but it's just a piece of a broken sand dollar. The shorebirds, the seagulls and stuff. We're back out on this point. She's after another treasure. The only thing I do, I keep, I keep wondering, what are we going to do with all these treasures? What are we going to do with all of them? Just look at them. Yep. I'll put them under our steps or on our steps or in our house or around our flower beds and garden. We're going to pass them on. And whenever I look at them, they just make me happy. So that's all I need them to do. That's right. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 what's that? Oh, is that another murex? Nah. It's just a cluster of oysters. But those ridges and stuff had me looking. So look at here. Just the siphonal canal part of a knobbed whelk. So we call that the tornado. 
What is it? Olive, big olive. Big olive shell. And we're in a little section right here with tons of oysters right around us on the ground. And it is empty. It's empty. Look how skinny this whelk was. It is, it's broken along the edge right here. It should come out to there, but it's just long and skinny. So here's a whelk and it's got all kind of growth growing on it barnacles that protozoan matrix other little um it's got a hermit jingles in it, in it. i see him growing and up the, the big claw hermit see his big claws they wide down in there yep and that's what i wanted to show you is he's barely got enough room with these little slipper shells that are all attached on it he has barely got enough room to fit in there but he's mm. still living this is his house he's protected he's got it hoarded up Kind of like we are shell hoarders. It looks like he's a shell hoarder too. Little olive. And he, since the water's right there, I'm just gonna leave him right there. Little angel wing, but it's busted. Let's get this car over to the boat, staff, while we're this close and unload it. All right. We're gonna have to. Let's cut across. She spotted something. Now this one is alive. I picked it up with my hand already, but a live sand dollar. And I can see that he's got lots of little legs moving on the bottom. So I'm just gonna put him right back down. Let's cut across and get this thing unloaded. Make sure that boat anchor's holding. Seems like a good place to, to say goodbye to you guys for a yeah, while. Yeah, we're definitely gonna say goodbye, but we're going to check out this boat to make sure, you know, it's secure. And if we see anything up through here, right up through here, we'll show you right what okay. we see. Is this the same horseshoe fine. crab that you looked at earlier? I'm not sure, but we definitely covered the horseshoe crabs. We have covered them. That one is empty. Another one. And I mean, we've covered the basically most types of shells and what we like to collect out on these beaches there's tons of other stuff for collectors collect what you want do your thing pick up what you want leave behind what you want to leave this one's a little different we don't find these out here a whole lot the egg cockle quite different than the regular cockle so we're gonna get off of here for now we're gonna uh, unload our car all our treasures into the boat we're gonna venture on down this uh, beach right here in South Carolina if you want to see that part make sure you hit that like make sure you hit that subscribe come along with us on these beach journeys these treasure hunts Thank y'all for journeying with us. Thank you to our channel members and our Patreons. Y'all help encourage us to get out here and make these videos. So thanks. You guys take care and stay safe out there.